Hi friends, I am Srishti Jain and today we are going to do 5 questions of finance. In this video, we will be discussing some recent and important topics. So, they relate to the AGR ruling by Supreme Court and the composition scheme. And the rest of the topics are also important. So, do watch the video till end to have a basic understanding of all of these topics. If you like my video, then do subscribe to our channel for more regular updates. Now, starting with the first question for today. Now, the first question says, financial instruments are claims on a stream of income and assets of another economic unit and they are held as a store of value and for an expected return. So, under which of the following heads do future contracts come? So, in this statement, it is briefly mentioned that what are financial instruments and then it has been asked that under which of the following heads does the future contracts come so you have to choose the most suitable and appropriate answer for it now let's first see what the answer can be and then we'll have a brief discussion and a basic difference between futures and the forwards contract so as we all know that primary securities it is a term that refers to new securities notice the word here new securities that are issued by private or public institutions and which are in turn purchased in the primary securities market and then when these securities changes hands between the investors without the direct involvement of the issuer then that comes in the secondary securities market and what is then over the counter so over the counter market means when there is no regulator as opposed to the exchange where there is a regulator and then option so it is one kind of a derivative so futures contracts are traded on the secondary securities market and what are future contracts so we will be looking at this aspect in the next slide so guys futures are derivative financial contracts that obligate the parties to transact an asset at a predetermined future date and price so they are in the standardized form and they have less risk involved because they are traded on the stock exchange and anything which is traded on the stock exchange is the secondary securities market now coming to the forwards so forwards are similar to futures but they are customizable or we can say they are unstandardized so therefore they have high risk involved and also they are not traded on the stock exchange rather they are traded on the over the counter market where there is no regulator now with this question i hope that you are able to understand the difference between futures and forwards now moving on to the next question for today the question says in order to protect small businesses from tax burden composition scheme is in place to bring relief to them so that they need not be burdened with the compliance provisions under the law now choose the correct statements with regard to gst composition scheme so there are three statements given to you and you have to tell me that which of the following statements are correct. So first let's read the options below and then we will be studying that what GST composition scheme means and how does it work. So the first statement says under GST composition scheme small traders and businesses in manufacturing pay a 1% tax on its turnover. Second says under the GST composition scheme, if the small businessmen are in service sector, then they can get 6% compounding. And the third statement says that GST composition scheme can be availed by businessmen with a turnover less than rupees 1.5 crore. So, the correct answer to this question is option D, that is all of the above statements are correct. Now, Looking at what composition scheme is, let's move on to the next slide. So this scheme targets small taxpayers so that they can get rid of the tedious DST formalities, compliances and under this composition pay scheme, the small taxpayers have a choice 
if they meet the eligibility criteria to opt this scheme and pay a fixed rate of turnover to the officials so earlier what happened was manufacturers and traders and restaurants not serving the alcohol was there so manufacturers and traders have to pay 1% of their turnover whereas restaurants which does not serve the alcohol they have to give 5% of their turnover but as you can see here the 32nd gst council meeting it proposed for the inclusion of service providers under the composition scheme so with the above mentioned rates of tax however a notification is yet to be issued in this regard so other service provider have to give now 6% of their turnover and earlier the turnover limit was 1 crore so that means the tax payers having a turnover less than 1 crore can opt for this scheme but now this threshold limit has been increased to 1.5 crore so which means that the tax payers now in this ambit are increased as the tax payers who earns less than 1.5 crore can opt for this scheme now although what i'm going to discuss is not related to the composition scheme but it is an important change that has been recently made so earlier the exemption limit for gst was 20 lakh rupees but now it has been just double to 40 lakh rupees now one question that i want to ask you is that what is the exemption limit for the northeastern states currently after the changes have been made so do answer this question in the comment section below now moving on to the next question for today now this question is really important as this is the most recent ruling by supreme court so the question says that adjusted gross revenue is the usage and licensing fee for the telecom department charges carriers now it is a basis on which the department of telecom calculates the levies payable by the operators so what is the ruling made by supreme court in this regard so first let's see the back story of this whole scenario in the next slide and then we will move back to this slide to answer this question now there was a conflict between the department of telecom and the operators as dot said that non core activities should also be included while calculating the adjusted gross revenue but operators opposed this and they said that agr should only include the revenues from the core activities so this matter has been under the litigation for 14 years that means from 2005 this was in litigation with the operators arguing that agr should comprise revenue from the telecom services only that is only from the core services but the dot insisted that agr should include all the revenues on by an operator including that from the non core telecom operations so now the supreme court has made a ruling for this and they upheld the definition by the department of telecom and said that agr should include all the revenue that is from core charges as well as the non core services so the core services are the licensing fees and the spectrum usage charges whereas the non core charges are the rent profit from sale on assets interest and other income so what is the likely impact of this decision that the operators now have to pay more and when they're already in the debt then their burden have increased substantially because the agr definition has been broadened by supreme court and a percentage of this agr has now to be paid by the operators now moving back to the question to answer it because now we are in a better position so the first statement says that supreme court has changed the definition of agr to include core activities second definition says that the definition of agr now excludes non core activities revenue to support telecom operators third says that the definition of agr now includes core as well as non core activities which increases the burden of telecom operators and the fourth statement says that the definition of agr is now calculated as 2 person on the basis of annual turnover of an operator so the correct answer to this question is option c and let me tell you that earlier 
non core activities were not included while calculating agr but now it is included and in 2015 also there was a change being made and it said that the agr is the revenue except the capital receipts and the non core activities and this definition is mentioned in economic times so after thorough research on this topic this is what i feel is correct now moving on to the next question for today now the question says that banking institutions play a vital role in as financial intermediary in the economy which of the following is not a part of scheduled commercial banks under the banking institutions so guys this is the indian financial system and it includes financial institutions financial markets financial instruments and then financial services so in the financial institutions there are the banking institutions and there are non banking institutions so in the banking institutions there it is for the bifurcated into the scheduled commercial banks and we have the cooperative banks so the scheduled commercial banks is then further bifurcated and they are private banks public banks foreign banks and rrb that is regional rural banks and in the non banking institutions there are the organized financial institutions and then the unorganized financial institutions then in the financial markets there are money market and capital markets financial instruments include on the basis of term that is short term medium term and long term and on the basis of type that is either the primary securities or the secondary securities then we have the financial services financial services include fund based services or the fee based services now moving back to the question so see public sector banks foreign banks in india and rrb they are all the part of scheduled commercial banks whereas development finance institutions are a part of the non banking institutions so option d is the correct answer now moving on to the last question for today this question says capital budgeting decisions are those decisions that involve current outlay in return for a series of benefits choose a suitable term for capital budgeting from the below given options so guys in finance there are three decisions involved and these three decisions are long term investment decision financing decisions and the dividend decisions so long term investment decisions are the capital budgeting decisions that is if you want to purchase a machinery or if you want to go for a long term project then you have to consider this capital budgeting decisions and they are generally irreversible in nature and it is considered to be one of the most important decisions in finance so this capital budgeting decision is a part of the investment decision and it relates to the fixed assets whereas if we talk about the current assets then we have the working capital management decision then we have the financing decision so it deals with the financing pattern of the firm that means debt or equity or preference that is the capital structure of the firm and each of these sources have their own peculiar features and characteristics so this is also a very important decision in finance then we have the dividend decision so it deals with the appropriation of after tax profits so these profits are available to be distributed among the shareholders or they can be retained by the firm for the reinvestment within the firm so the profits which are not distributed they are impliedly retained in the firm so there is a major decision involved here that whether to retain the profits or to distribute it as dividends to the shareholders and increase their wealth so the investment decisions financing decisions and the dividend decisions they are the three most important decisions of finance and capital budgeting decisions as we have seen it is irreversible it is long term it is really important for a firm and it involve substantial commitments on part of the firm now moving back to the question to answer it so based on our understanding capital budgeting decisions they are reversible no that is not correct irreversible is the correct answer unimportant they are not unimportant rather they are the most important decision 
a firm takes. So the correct answer here is option B. So with this, we have completed five questions of finance for today. I hope that you liked today's session and do not forget to answer the question that I have asked you. And I will also not forget to share the link regarding the AGR ruling by Supreme Court where in the ET article it is specifically mentioned that in 2015 AGR includes all revenues except the capital receipts and non-core activities. If you like my video then do subscribe to our channel for more regular updates. Thank you for watching my video.